Our next question comes from Dave S. He's uh, asking about casting into the wind. He's getting tailing loops, dealing with uh, those windy conditions. So a couple things you want to do is cast a little bit differently in the wind. When you're dealing with a wind that comes right at you, or actually wind from almost any direction, a couple things you can do is actually make a low angle cast. If you get this rod tip down low and cast underneath the wind, you're going to be able to get that line to jump out much easier than if you're casting way up here in the wind. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you're dealing with a windy condition is make a low angle cast. Have you ever seen birds flying around on the beach? They're usually almost flying in between the waves. They're down nice and low, so they're below that wind. So if we make our low angle cast, now we're cutting that line out underneath the wind. We can deliver that fly much more effectively to these fish. So that's one thing you can do when you're dealing with a wind. If you're dealing with a wind coming right at you, right at your face, that's also where it's important to get that low angle cast and deliver that fly underneath the wind. Get it to turn over well, get it to just cut right through that wind and jump right out. If we make this cast up high in the wind, well now that line's getting blown right back. You can see it start to pile up. This is actually a pretty windy day, so it's great for uh, casting in windy conditions. Now if we have a wind coming at our casting shoulder, we have to be really careful because that can blow that fly, that heavy clouser or that you know, bonefish fly right in the back of our neck, in our ear, in your back. What you want to do in that situation is you can actually cast off your shoulder. You can take that rod tip and just tilt it a little bit over your shoulder right here. Now that fly is going to be on the other side and you're not going to have to worry about hooking yourself. So to do that, I'm just going to take this rod tip and just bring it over my opposite shoulder here and make that same cast right up over that opposite shoulder. You can still deliver that fly when you're dealing with windy conditions. If you have a really strong wind at your casting shoulder, I think one of the best things to do is turn your back to the wind and make a back cast. Making a back cast out to those fish, that's probably one of the most effective ways to get that fly line out there and still get it out there accurately without having to get in any kind of weird position to get that line to roll out. So you can turn your back to a wind coming at your casting shoulder. If you have a wind casting at your non-casting shoulder, in this case my left shoulder, well if I just make that same cast I'm going to still be in pretty good shape. If I get a little bit of a haul with it too, that's going to prevent that wind from dragging that line and pulling it way out in this direction. So just remember that low angle cast is pretty much your best bet for most windy conditions. Now if I have a wind blowing at my back, a wind blowing at your back can be kind of fun. Remember that oval cast from dealing with heavy flies? Well we can do that same cast and that's going to actually act like a sail. That loop on that forward cast, it's almost going to catch the wind and travel right out. So we make that low back cast, high forward cast, the wind catches it and it can blow it right out to those fish. Now here we got a wind coming at us so it would be better if I was casting in this direction. Now Dave's question relates to tailing loops tailing loops in the wind. That's a very, very common thing. It happens to everybody. It happens to myself, it happens to a lot of other casters I know. When you're dealing with wind, the most common thing folks try to do, especially as guys, is we try to overpower it. We try to really muscle out that cast and next thing you know we get that tailing loop. A tailing loop happens when that line comes below the fly, or that fly comes below the fly line and actually starts to wrap around. So I'll show you a tailing loop one more time. I'm going to try and do it nice and slow so you can see it. There's that tailing loop right there. That can actually cause knots in your leader, which is pretty bad. We don't want that to happen. That tailing loop can be caused by a couple different things, but a real common cause is just getting too aggressive too soon. And when you're dealing with wind, you naturally want to try and hit a little bit harder. Just remember keep that nice smooth casting stroke and that's going to get that fly to turn right over nice and smooth. It's going to get that fly to jump out and not tail even in the windiest conditions. Also get that line down nice and low and we can really start to punch that fly out and deliver it to those fish that are 30, 40, 50 feet away.